So much fun! We love it! Incredible. Yep. Really special. You just had to come to Berwick. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going by. Michael Gupta, and uh, we're, we're, we've got the brand this year of Hack Attack Memories, so I want you to think of a Hack Attack memory you'd like to share with me. Hi Michael, thanks for Hi, joining sir. us at Berwick Television. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, Michael Gupta. Yeah, and what have you been doing here for the last... 20 years. 20 years we've been running the Hackmatack Playhouse. Actually more than 20, more like was 50, uh, including my father. I've been running it for about 26 years. And I understand this was the final season. Smoke on the Mountain was the final play here. Yes, at the Playhouse. ended last week. Ended last week. And yeah. um, can, I'd like to get a little background on how this got started. Why did your father start the Playhouse? He was always interested in theater. Uh, he went to the University of Maine uh, to get an agricultural degree. He had a degree in animal husbandry. We had cows in the barn. Um, and in the mid-60s, uh, late 60s, got kind of tired of the cows, um, thought he would try something different. He was always interested in theater. He had started other theaters and worked at theater uh, when he was in the um, University of Maine, yeah. he um, performed a lot and worked in the theater there. Came back home and started uh, the Rochester Music Theater. Um, started a theater at the Beaver Dam Grange called uh, Beaver Dam Little Theater. Started, always was doing church groups at, you know, theater church groups and schools. He taught also at the high school, Oyster River High School in Durham, and um, he did theater there. So he cleaned out the barn and decided to do theater right in his backyard. No more cows, did he? No more cows. I want to tell you one of my earliest Hack Attack memories is that show, Oklahoma, and my dad, who started this theater 50 years ago, piling us all in the back of this pickup truck with the megaphones and singing that song and every other song from Oklahoma as we traveled through the streets of Dover and Rochester. <laughs> was this an economic decision? Was, uh, it, was it something it was a, seen both, as a money maker? No, no. It was never thought of as a money maker. Um, he wasn't making any money at the cows either. Um, you know, he had another job, a teaching job. Yeah. And, but he loved the theater. He loved to get the community together to 
to perform and, and to watch theater. So that's, that's, nice. that's so what he did. This would have been 1972. Correct. What was it like then here in Berwick? Did the people coming to the theater, were they mostly local? Were they from around the seacoast? Well, we've always had a lot of local people. Um, he had a, a big group that came from Durham and Dover, uh, just because he had taught there for so many years and, and a lot of people knew him. Everybody knew him from North Berwick and Berwick as well. I mean, he, we lived here forever. Uh, went to church here, you know, all us children were in school. So we had a lot of locals, but um, we advertised pretty heavily down at the beaches, especially Wells Beach. And we always had a lot of people from Wells and Agonquit as well. I wanted to ask, what was the audience like then compared to what was the audience like this year? Was, um, you mentioned when I came to the show here this year, you indicated that Theonurder in a Barn was an idea that come, somehow had its day. Was it always an older crowd? Was it, were there younger people? No, I think it was always an older crowd. Um, people have changed a lot. Um, I know 50 years ago, 40 years ago, everyone would decide, like in December, what shows they were going to and what seats they were going to sit in on what night. They knew, they, they could plan in December and January and February and they would call my dad constantly saying, this is where I want to sit on, on August 17th. I want to sit in J2 and 3. And we would do all our seating like that. I mean, people would plan that far ahead. It was amazing. Now we're lucky the day before they call up on their way to the show, do you have any seats? You know, that's really changed. That's interesting that they tried, that they made, because you had more than one shows back then. Oh, no, same, yeah. same schedule, yeah. yeah. We had five or six shows, and they would schedule their whole summer. Wow. Uh, it was amazing. And, and schedule the seats that they're going to sit in. And if you gave those seats to anybody else on the night that they were supposed to come, <laughs> they would be so irritated. <laughs> uh, it, th it, that's changed. Yeah. That's changed. How about one of your Happy Jack numbers? I know you have them. Yes, ma'am. One of my best memories is coming here for the last 15 years and be greeted by you. <laughs> why did you decide to give it up this year? Why, why uh, do it? I thought 50 years was a pretty good long time. Was it a lot of work? Oh, yeah. The theater is a lot of work. It takes a lot of people and a lot of coordination a lot of work from the family and from so many people outside the family. Was that on you? Were you the person coordinating uh, I everything? I did plenty of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a full-time job in the summer then. Yeah, and I have a full-time job. Yeah. 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 I, one thing about summer theater, Sue, is you start from zero every year. I mean, some people come back for another year, for a second year, for a third year. But you're pretty much starting at zero with all the actors, all the directors, all your staff, your box office people. Um, the only people that really come back year after year after year is the audience. But um, you know, to find people that know what they're doing and, or to train people year after year after year, that's, that's a lot of work. Yeah, to put that together. Yeah. Was it, um, did you feel it was just time because it was 50 years? We've, We've always thought of 50 years as being a good goal. Yeah. My dad would have said the second year would have been a good goal, and then the <laughs> third year, and then the fourth year. And we've never had a longer horizon than the next year. <laughs> um, I want to back up a little bit okay. to Hackmatack. Is that the name of the farm, or is that, did you start that with the playhouse? It really started out with the playhouse. It did. We've We've now made it the name of the farm. You have. Yeah. Why, why Hackmatack? Hackmatack is a tree. Remember from fifth grade? Uh, deciduous trees and coniferous trees? Actually, I don't. Okay, so, well. <laughs> You'll have to explain it. Coniferous trees are uh, trees that, uh, that keep their spills in the wintertime, like a pine tree. Mm -hmm. A deciduous tree is like a maple tree that loses their spills, their leaves, in the, yeah. the wintertime. 
Well, a hackmatack tree is a coniferous tree, but it loses its spills. So it's a little bit like both kinds of trees. And if you look at a hackmatack in the wintertime, it looks dead. Yeah. And then it comes back to life in the summertime. Do you have any as on your... Does, as Sorry. does the theater, the hackmatack. Comes back to life, it looks dead in the winter. Got it. Do you have any on your property? Uh, yes, we do. Well, you just happened to be walking and you saw the tree and it was, uh, it was the inspiration? It was my dad that chose the, uh, the name. Okay. So he thought it was a perfect name. Okay. Well, the land... His, his other choice was Hay House Playhouse. Hay House Playhouse? The Hay House Playhouse. Okay. The land is obviously very important here. Yes. This has been in your family for how long? Since the 1600s. Can you talk about that? I mean, how has it managed to stay in the family? and? What's been going on here over there? Well, my family's always been farmers, always lived here. I <laughs> think they had jobs that kept them here, uh, subsistence farming for a long time. Uh, my grandfather was a lumberman, uh, kept him right here. Yeah. Um, my dad did some other things, but we did farming back then too. We grew vegetables, had the cows. Um, we have animals now on the farm. Can you talk about that? What do you? I've seen the bison. We've got bison. Uh, we've got Mangalisa pigs. We've got some goats, San Clemente goats. There's a. Um, they're all kind of uh, special, uh, special types of animals, and basically my son takes care of those uh, animals. And you have the farm store here. And we have a farm store. Yeah. yeah. And we sell all the meat from those products and some other local goods as well. Do you feel that people will still keep coming here to the farm? I hope so. To see, because sometimes there's people that just park their cars to come see the bison, I yes. understand. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, they do. Um, we have other events here. Um, we've been having a series of bluegrass concerts all summer long. Um, we'll continue with some of that. We've got a wedding um, coming up this fall. We use it as a wedding venue. Yeah. Um, and we've got some other plans. My sons have plans that we need to talk about. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I'm wondering, you know, it's been here since the 1600s. Uh -huh. What do you think Hackmatack has meant to Berwick, to the community? Um, well, I know to the community of, of uh, patrons that we have, I mean, it's, and I know it's been a home for them. Uh, it's been a, a summer event that they can count on for the last 50 years. Um, an, an important family time, I think. It, I know I've heard a lot of people, kids have come back from college and they come and just want to come here to the hack attack. And we don't change all that much, as you know. Yeah. Uh, we haven't changed all that much. And so people like to come back to see something that hasn't changed over 50 years. And it's a tradition, and it has a been. A tradition, yeah. Yes! One of my favorite memories is the blueberry pie. Blueberry <laughs> pie, all right. <laughs> do you feel if somebody else wanted to step in to do all the work that you did, that you would keep it running as a playhouse? A family member? No, anybody. Um, I don't know if I would go outside the family. Um, um, I'm a pretty conservative guy. The kind of shows that we do, I would want to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, so as long as I'm around, I don't think that would happen. I, I mean, we have no intention of selling it outside of the mm -hmm. family, uh, you know. And, and the theater is very intertwined with the farm and with the family. Um, yeah. So it's it's in literally in our backyard. <laughs> yes. Any plans for the barn now? Um, I do want to talk to my sons. They've got some ideas and, and we're going to talk about them. Okay. I want to uh, talk a little bit about the theater business itself. Um, it seems like, um, I mean, it's such an intimate experience. Mm -hmm. You get a crowd in, the lights go down, mm -hmm. Everybody's together, laughing, mm -hmm. whatever, together. Crying sometimes. And cr crying together. Yeah. And it seems like now entertainment 
is on your phone, oh, it's no. solo. Can you talk about yeah. the... Uh, That's RP a change. That's yeah. a change. Um, I, I'm, this type of entertainment is something from, you know, 80 years ago, 70 years ago, 90 years ago, um, 50 years ago. Um, it's not an entertainment form of uh, 2022. Yeah. Um, and, and because of that, our audience has been dwindling, for sure. It has been. Um, it's a niche. You know, other theaters, a Gunkle Players, for example, does a great job in that niche. But some of the shows are just a different kind of show. They're shorter. They're um, more rock and roll oriented or just a different kind of modern twist. It's not, a, it's not old theater that, that some people have grown up with. Was it the kind of theater where a young man would have taken his girlfriend for a date to come here if he didn't know anybody in the in this production? Fifty years ago? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and today? This today? Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And what's the business model? Do you survive on ticket sales in Maine? Are are there grants available or um, how does that work? We survive pretty much just on ticket sales, yes. Yeah. Um, definitely people donated, and we appreciated that. Uh, we had some uh, business donations, definitely. Um, but those have been dwindling over the, over the decades. Yeah. Pretty much just, um, we, we didn't push a lot for grants. Maybe that's why we didn't receive grants. <laughs> But we don't have a staff that pushes for grants. That's not the kind of thing we do. What kind of staff did it take? Did you have people um, me, on staff? Yeah. Me, <laughs> my wife, my yeah. kids. Yeah. Um, we'd always have, uh, you know, an artistic staff, obviously. Yes. But, um, you know, when you push for a lot of grants, you, you have to have a foundational, yeah. you know, staff. People looking to just push for grant money. And you pay those people quite a lot of money to push for grant money, and you become a different organization. Yes. We had a, const we had a uh, construction issue, issue with the barn a while ago, and um, we needed to spend a little bit of money to get it fixed. We brought some couple of different architects in to take a look at it and see what they thought. And, you know, one guy said, I could fix it for like hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Next guy says I can fix it for two hundred thousand dollars. The next guy says well for five hundred thousand dollars what we're going to do is we're going to take down the barn but we're going to replace it with a brand new facility where you can have uh, all of the the new new items that you need all the new products you need have all new seating have all the new lights and places to put the lights air conditioned heated you can have um, uh, shows 11 or 12 months of the year, really be able to make a lot of money. And I said, that's not what I want, and none of that. And I don't have $500,000 anyways, nor did I have the 200000 or the 100000 <laughs> So uh, we stayed pretty much the same the way we are now, <laughs> and that's the way we wanted it. Yeah. And I think... Um, I understand when theaters have to do that sort of thing, which is fine. The decision I made is to not go that direction. Okay. And for the actors and those working behind the scenes, this is one more theater gone. I don't know how other theaters are doing, but, and I don't know how supportive the state of Maine is or the state of New Hampshire is to, to mm. theaters there. Yeah. Do you feel that theaters are struggling or are there venues for actors? After, you know, there's places in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, yeah. Portland, I, Maine. I think generally they're struggling. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how many will tell you that straight on because they don't want to make it look like they're struggling. <laughs> yeah. And they don't mm -hmm. want to be struggling. 
but I think they are. Yeah. And, and it's a tough business to be in. It's not really a business. Your father started it for the love of it. Yes. And, and he, a lot of those theaters that we talked about, those people are in it for the love of it as well. Yes. Yes. Rather than the business model. Um, I'm wondering about what's next for you. Me personally? Yeah, and? We're going to go kayaking. <laughs> Something you don't usually, not able to do in the summer. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sure I'll be busy. Um, have you um, had anybody here who starred in a production who became well known? Um, we have people that um, do a lot of Broadway acting now. We have uh, one girl that's uh, a TikTok star. Um, we have people in every walk of life uh, as uh, lawyers, as theater professionals, as, as uh, professors, as um, the mechanics, carpenters, and they're all very special, and they all do a good job. Okay. And they all have been enriched by their life here at Hackman Tech, and by their acting experience in general. Where did the actors come from? Were they local? Were they more professional? We had a, a real mix, a real yeah. mix over the years. Um, we would always audition in New York or in Boston. We'd always have local auditions. We usually started off with local auditions. Um, had a lot of local people, equity actors that maybe given up on their New York career, have moved back to the area. Yeah. Um, and we would have um, a lot of university students. We have a very good relationship with the University, university of New Hampshire, both with the actors and with the staff there, uh, staff and professors. Um, a lot of them have come and participated at, uh, in Hack and Tack. We work very closely with yeah, UNH. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we've had a, certainly had a group of uh, local high school people as well. I mean, through the years, we just picked a talent pool. It's a big talent pool. <laughs> and then we whittle it down to what we need and, and what's available and, and what we need. And, you know, we always would put up actors over the years. Um, but we try not to put up too many actors, put them up with neighbors and friends in the area. Not here at, at the home. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Michael, oh, have yeah. you ever starred in a show or been yeah. tempted to be in a show? I've been in lots of shows. You have? Which yes. ones? In the earlier days of Hack and Attack, I was in quite a few shows. <laughs> yes, Kathy Fink, who's played many a show here. So, I have way too many memories and it would take all night, but I'll share one that involves you. Oh, me. I was still in high school because your father was my history of modern European drama teacher at Oyster River. Yeah. And all of Drama Club had to work in Hackmatack in the summer. <laughs> and I wanted to not only play piano, but be on stage and try it. We did Little Abner, and Michael was Little Abner. <laughs> <laughs> and was very handsome. Uh, they all took their shirts off. What? And it was, it was Why didn't great. you tell me this 45 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> it was 1976, and I will never forget. Do you have a favorite show that you, that's been here? My favorite show was probably um, Bridges of Madison County. Really? And I loved that show. Uh, although I loved a lot of shows. Um, the first time we did, um, funny thing happened on the way to the forum with starring uh, Blaine Pickett and Michael Tobin. Absolutely hilarious. It was an excellent show. Yeah. Um, I wasn't in either, either of those two shows. <laughs> <laughs> did you see Bridges of Madison County? Not here, oh. just the movie. Oh. Forget the movie. If yeah. you get to see the play sometime, it's, it's a different show. We talked about the intimacy of the theater. What's different between going to a play, seeing a movie in a the theater, or even seeing a movie at home? Uh, 
it's live too. It changes every single night. It changes all the time. The people are there. <laughs> it's such a different experience. You know, it's it's a live experience. What what's going on really is going on. I mean, there's always the the chance that something goes wrong. Well, I have um, to ask, has there been? Obviously, something's always gone wrong. You know, with the animals going on the stage or <gasps> a set breaking or someone breaking their arm. Did There's that really happen? Like that. Somebody broke their arm on stage? Uh, yes. We had all sorts of problems. We had one, we had one show. Um, 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 we're, we're trying to think of the name of the show. I'm trying to think of the show. It's um, The King and I. King mm -hmm. and I. Where, um, they have that beautiful song, um, We Kiss in the Shadow. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, that girl went on to do that same role on Broadway. But the guy who sang that song sang it one afternoon on the matinee with a humongous bug in his ear. <laughs> How did he do that? Amazing. He came off stage and he said, oh, something's bothering me. I, I don't know what it is. And, and eventually we pulled a bug out of his ear. It was, it was awful. Do you remember what kind of bug it was? Not an A earwig. <laughs> but the point is, those things can happen in, in, in real live theater. Those things don't happen in movies. Um, yeah. And so you always have that. You always, I think the audience is a little bit always on the edge of the seat because any of those things can happen at any time. So uh, I think the audience will react to that all the time. And plus, yeah. if it's a musical, if it's a, whatever the show is, I mean, it's, if it's live show, it's, it's just so much better, so much, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's never happened. I mean, even though they might have done that show 15 times, the one you're seeing is a fresh production that's never happened before. Yeah. You know, that's, you're seeing something that's never happened before and never will happen again. Even though it's the same show they might have done the day before. Yes, ma'am. We were blown away by Les Mis. Les Mis. It was so amazing. Yes. We yeah. had seen it in Boston, and we yeah. did kind of figured this would be a letdown. Better than Boston. No. Excellent. Three of the cast members from Les Mis is in the show tonight. You'll be happy to know. Do you still keep in contact with any of the actors or people that worked here? Did they write oh, to you? or All the time. I mean, we have a hat and tech family. Yeah. yeah. We, all the time. Yeah. yeah. I heard um, there was a big party for you the next day after the last show. For everybody. For yeah. everybody. Yeah. But 50 years of Hackman Tech. Did a lot come yeah. back to oh, that yeah. to celebrate? The place was packed. We, we performed scenes from shows we've done in the past, performed songs that we've done in the past. It was a wonderful night. Wonderful yeah. afternoon. All afternoon. Um, we had we had a guy we had the guy come back who who has done the, um, the music man for us. Uh, he 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 played uh, Harold Hill twice for us. He came back and sang. Um, he got trouble in River City. What a great song! And he sang his part, and the audience sang the chorus. And everybody in the audience knew what the chorus was. It was just amazing. <laughs> and he was amazing, too, to, to be able to pull that sh song out of his head after so many years. That's well, a tough, tough number. Well, you did that. You opened the show here this summer by singing, just out of the cold. You didn't uh, introduce it. You uh, just started I, singing. I had to calm the audience down. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful, though, when the audience joined in. Joined in. Yeah, I know. That yeah. was nice. Yeah. That was Oklahoma. amazing. Yes. Yeah. Opening yeah. song from Oklahoma. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Does anybody want to hear that? I don't know. Okay. I have it from the last night. Oh, of course. Oh, he's got it live. Yeah. That's right. He's got it live. Yeah. Michael uh, Berwick is going to miss Hackmatack Playhouse. Yeah. Thank and you, thank, thank goodness we still have Hackmatack the farm. Th thank you. We yeah. may keep in touch. We may be doing other things. Excellent. I okay. want to hear about, oh. about that when it comes up. Great. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We could sit and talk about Habitat. Remember, it's 50 years. How many people have been here for 50 years? 
Oh, I see a few handfuls. There you go. How many people will listen to their first night? Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, you have a good show tonight because they got one chance on memory. Right? <laughs> Remember, many of you over the years have given contributions to Hatton Attack. You've given your commitments to Hatton Attack, and we appreciate it very, very much. We couldn't exist without those contributions and commitments. Thank you. Round of applause.